What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today in the stock market we continue to see a pullback from resistance but we have still not broken down through critical support. With tomorrow's CPI data we are very likely going to finally break out of this consolidation. First up let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, all right. So today in SPY, we were down 0.88% and we did see SPY coming down to that critical support at 380. And if the bulls lose this support, it is more than likely good night bulls were going down for the next late lower. So remember, there's only two critical levels you need to watch right now. And that's SPY 380 for the bulls to use as support and SPY 390 for the bears to use as resistance. If either of those levels break, we are likely getting the next leg in the stock market in that direction. So below 380, keep in mind, we are very likely going to 350. And above 390 to about 393, we are very likely going up to retest the high just below 418. The reason I say the next move is likely going to be a large leg in the market is because we have gone nowhere for two months now. So I do believe when we break out of this wedge, whether it be to the upside or the downside, it is going to be at least a $30 move and it is going to be in the direction of the breakout. So I know a lot of you wish you knew exactly which direction we were going to break out, but that's just not the reality in trading. No matter what happens with the CPI data, whether it's good or bad, and whether or not you predicted it successfully does not guarantee price action will move in that direction. If you've been around markets long enough, you know that the market is very efficient and it's very good at pricing things in. So even if we get bad CPI data tomorrow, we could still see a bullish breakout. And if we get good CPI data tomorrow, we could still see a bearish breakdown. You really have no idea where we're going just because of a data point. You need to see price action moving in that direction because that is all that matters. And what you're trading is price action and not news. So it's either a breakdown below 380 or a breakout above 390. And there's no in between because that is what you need to validate the next leg in this market. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we were down about 1% and we did come down to that critical support at the 20 simple moving average just above 284 and we did close below 287. But overall, if you look at the triple Qs, the tech sector is leading the way higher because we do have the breakout. And so far, this just looks like a successful retest of the breakout, testing that resistance trend line as support. So if we break down below 284, the bears are gaining traction and we will need to lose this support trend line. Otherwise, look for the bulls to break above 297 to get the next leg higher. Above 297, we're going back up to 315. And if we start breaking down below about 284, we're very likely going for that next leg lower at 258. It's really that simple, so don't overcomplicate it. We either break down through support and go down for the next leg lower, or we get the breakout through resistance to get the next leg higher. Anything in between is anybody's guess and it's going to be a volatile whipsaw that's likely ending with tomorrow's CPI data. So just be ready to act accordingly whether we break through support or break out through resistance and you should have a trade plan that is going to be prepared for either scenario. In the Dow Jones, we were down 0.56%, also coming back down to the 20 simple moving average and that support trend line right around 308. So if we lose support at 308, get ready to retest the low at 297 or make that next leg lower at 285. If we get the bull breakout, that will be a breakout above 316 or that gap close right around 323 and retesting the high at 333. So it's either a breakout above resistance at 315 to 316 or a breakdown through support down here at 308 and then get ready for the next leg lower down to 297 or the next leg higher up to 323. And if we continue through those gaps, we could go the next levels higher or the next leg lower. In the Russell 2000 IWM ETF, we were down 0.34% as the Russell 2000 also came back down to the 20 simple moving average and so far is holding that level as support. So the critical support in IWM is right around 170 to 171. And if we lose all of that support, get ready to retest the low at 164 or make that next leg lower at 156. And the bull breakout at this point will be back over 175 and then getting over that 50 EMA right around 179. If we can clear resistance, we'll likely close that gap just below 184 and then get the bullish breakout look with the resistance trend line. But as you can tell, all of these indices are still consolidating, getting ready for the next leg in the market. And I'll remind you one last time, we have gone absolutely nowhere for two months. So get ready for a very monster move coming into the market. On the RK ETF, we were up 1.6% as RK did bounce off of that support zone right around 42, but still closed below the 50 EMA and still getting rejected below that resistance at 47. So whether or not this bounce is going to have any momentum is irrelevant until we break over 47 for at least two consecutive days. And if we do lose support right around 42, get ready to retest the low at 36.5 or make the next leg lower at 33.7. You're getting a lot more bearish below 42 and a lot more bullish above 47. So just wait for the breakout and then prepare to act accordingly. 
On the VIX, we were up 4.28% as the VIX continues to close higher since testing that support zone right around 24 to 25, and now we're back over 26, back within the support trend line. Overall, though, the VIX is still looking like it is trending lower, even though we are back in the support trend line. So the VIX will need to break out above 30 to get that volatile bear market leg lower. Otherwise, you're getting a lot more bullish if the VIX closes below 24. On Bitcoin, we're currently down about 2.5% as Bitcoin clearly got rejected around 22,000 is coming back down to support at 19,000. I continue to tell you this is either going to be a double top and double bottom volatile whipsaw between support and resistance until we get the breakout. So just like the indices, you need to be patient in Bitcoin until we get a decisive breakout. The bearish breakdown will be on a break below 19,000 with the price target down there at 12,000 or the bullish breakout above 22,000 to retest resistance at 25,000 and then 28,000. You could trade the range, but you need to be prepared for the next leg once we get the breakout below support or the breakout above resistance. On NVIDIA stock, we were down 0.46% as NVIDIA continues to close above 150, but still getting rejected below that resistance. So for all we know, this is either going to be a higher low before we get the bullish breakout, or we're going down for that next leg lower at 130 to 125, which will require the breakdown below about 145. So for that reason, the bears are still in full control. I would not get bullish until we can at least clear 158 to 161, and then we could go back up to 177 or fill that gap at 180. So I would stay bearish until we get the bullish breakout personally because this is a falling knife downtrend and we could still be going for that next leg lower as long as we have the bear trend and as long as we have the bearish price action, which we currently still do. On Tesla stock, we were down about a half a percent as Tesla came back down to support at $700 after getting rejected at the top of that consolidation wedge and that 50 EMA. If we lose support at $700, we're coming back down to the support trend line right around $654. And if we lose $654, look for the support at $620 or the next leg lower at $571. The bull breakout will be the close above $750 and then $775. But right now, you can clearly see this is a consolidation wedge. Just like we're seeing in the indices, we have gone absolutely nowhere for two months. So Tesla is going to see a very large move once we break out of this consolidation. In Apple stock, we were up 0.68% as our market moving stock continues to look bullish with the higher high and higher low in the daily chart. And we're getting very close to testing that resistance zone at 150, which is going to be very strong resistance. We closed back over the 50 EMA for three of the last four days. We're developing a bull trend. We have the higher low and higher high and Apple is a market moving stock. So this is not something I would completely ignore. If we were seeing bearish price action across the market, we would not be seeing Apple breaking out. We would have easily closed the gap and we should have seen Apple trending lower down below 130, but that is not what we're seeing. We're seeing Apple looking quite bullish as long as it's trading above 137. So in the short term, you can stay bullish on Apple as long as it's above about 142 to 137. So do keep in mind the bears do have better risk reward right now because we are closer to resistance than we are at support. So if you are wanting to get bullish, you can raise your support all the way up here to about 145, knowing that if we break 145, we'll likely come back down to 142. On the financial sector, we were down 0.63% as we did see selling above that resistance and we did squeak out a close below the 20 simple moving average. But overall, this is still very tight consolidation. We still have a gap to fill to the upside, but that's meaningless if we lose the support at 30.8. The industrials were down 0.31%, closing below all the moving averages and still looking bearish, but overall still in a very tight consolidation that could break in either direction. And we do have gaps to fill to the downside and the upside. So just have a plan to act accordingly, depending on which direction we break out of this wedge. The healthcare sector was down 1.27%, but it looks like a clear retest of the breakout. As you can clearly see, we broke above the resistance trend line and came back down to test it as support and we do have a positively sloping 20 simple moving average. Overall, the healthcare sector is looking bullish, but we still need to clear that resistance at 131 to continue to go higher. The energy sector was down 1.95% as we clearly lost that support at $70 and trending back down towards 66.5. If we lose that support, look for the next leg lower to be down there at 63, and you're not getting bullish until we can get back over $70. So jumping back over the S&P 500, keep in mind that tomorrow is very likely going to lead to the breakout that we need to get the next leg in the market. So you're either waiting for the breakdown below 380 or the breakout above 390. And then that is likely going to determine where the next move in the markets are going to be. Bullish above 390 and bearish below 380. It does not get any simpler than that. So be patient and be disciplined and get ready for this next leg because I remind you the market has not gone anywhere in two months. So we are very likely going to see a very large move in the market. So just be on the right side of the trade and then be ready to act accordingly whether we break down bearish or break out bullish. Also, don't forget that I do have Bank Trade Alert, which is an algorithm driven trade alert service that only trades the 
ETF TQQ and sends you all of your buy and sell alerts directly via email and text message. Even in the bear market of 2008, Bank beat the market and had a very positive return. If you're looking for more information or want to subscribe, you can click on the link in the description of this video. I also have the Stocks Channel Discord where I do intraday updates and analysis and bring new trade ideas to you weekly. If you're interested in joining the Stocks Channel Trading Discord community, you can find out how to join the Discord server by clicking on the link below. So thank you for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.